With tuition costs on the rise and federal financial aid experiencing deep cuts, students are finding it increasingly difficult to fund their education. The RCC Foundation believes that education should be accessible for everyone. In the first awarding cycle of the 2011-12 scholarship season, we awarded over $540,000. In the following video, we are going to give you some information and tips on how to apply for Foundation scholarships and what will make your application stand apart from the others. I don't have enough money to pay for college. Can you help me? That's what we're here for. All you have to do is fill out one scholarship application and you'll be considered for over 180 different scholarships. I've never filled out a scholarship application before. Can you help me with that? Sure, we can do each section together. We'll start with community, let's start with community activities. Should I talk about my sweet karate moves and community activities? We definitely want to hear about your interest outside of school, but most importantly, you want the readers to know that you're a well-rounded person. So you should list any volunteer or community service that you do, hobbies, interests, sports, or even family activities that you do on a regular basis. Well, I've been doing karate for about 10 years now. I've been competing. Should I include that too? Exactly! Now you're getting the idea. What else can you list on your community service? Well, I tutor elementary school kids for about two hours a week, and I've been doing that for about a year. And I help with Relay for Life for the last five years. And I help coach soccer too. All of those things should be listed in that section. But remember, you'll want your volunteer work to be the first things listed, and then any other activities that we talked about. You're going to have space for up to 10, so be sure to list as many as possible. And try to keep it current, maybe in the last five years or so. Whether you coach soccer, played on your high school tennis team, babysit your neighbor's kids once a week, volunteer at the health clinic, or play in the high school band, any of these activities can be included in that section. Let's talk about the personal statement essay. This is one of those things that students seem to have the most trouble with. There are three areas that you're going to be scored on. The first is educational and life goals, your field of study, how you're going to use it to give back to the community, and why it's your passion. You're definitely going to want to make it persuasive. You can also talk about any special family circumstances, difficult barriers that you've overcome, hobbies and interests. You can bring in the things that you discussed in community activities too. Be sure to look at your grammar and formatting and please use your spell check. So I should write about wanting to be a pharmacist because I've always been interested in chemistry and wanting to help people out. Definitely. Where do you think you're going to want to work after you get your degree? Well, I grew up here and I really want to stay in the community. I'd love to work for the Grants Pass Pharmacy. That's perfect. What else about your life can you include? Well, I didn't really have a great childhood. I don't think that the readers want to hear about that, do they? On the contrary, the readers do want to hear about your family circumstances. Anything that happened in your life that has made you who you are today, they're going to want to know about. If you've overcome those barriers, you should be proud. Talk about it in your essay. How long does the essay have to be? At minimum, 400 words, which is about half a page. Maximum, 900. No more than one page on this essay. And remember, spell check. Make sure your grammar is good and check your format. So the only job that I've ever had has been flipping burgers. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that for two years. Could I put that on the application? Most definitely. The readers will understand. You started that job in high school, so obviously you haven't had time to develop a long employment history. All right, well I've had a friend who's been injured and he hasn't done any employment for years. What should he do? He'll want to write an explanation of that in the employment section and explain how long he's been off work. The last piece of the application is the recommendation form. You'll need to fill out two to meet the requirement. What about my instructor? Can she fill out my recommendation form? Instructors are great choices as recommenders. You could also ask your counselor. You mean like this? Actually, I was thinking more like your high school counselor or academic advisor, but I guess this would be okay. What about my employer? Can she fill one out for me? Employers are a great choice for recommenders too. You could also ask pastors or clergy, someone you volunteered with or served on a board with, or even a coach. Just try to avoid asking family or your BFF. They tend to not score very highly with the readers. The online application will be unavailable after 5 p.m. 
Recommendation forms may be turned into the Foundation Office on the Redwood Campus Building H or to Rogue Central Student Services on any campus by the deadline time. Please ask that they are date stamped. If forms are mailed, they must reach the Foundation Office by the deadline date.